The DH ADSR is a complex ADSR envelope based on the original Mini Moog Model D envelope. It's 10 HP wide and comes in either a black or a silver front panel. It retains the snappy attack of the Model D envelope and its unique key re-triggering behaviour, but adds separate decay and release pots so that their slopes can be set differently. It also adds delay and hold functions along with a slow setting allowing much longer envelope times. The lay and hold function on their own and when used in combination with the retrigger switch hugely extending its functionality. It can recreate and expand upon the behaviour of the EMS trapezoid envelope generator and it can be used with a second envelope generator such as another DHA DSR with their outputs mixed together to generate complex envelopes. This is the module out of the box and there's the profile and on the back here this is the jumper that relates to the behavior of the inverted output so if you don't want the plus 8 volt bias applied to it then you just slide this up and take it off and this is the power connector and the bottom two pins are the minus 12 volt so with your cable you need to make sure that the red stripe is at the bottom because the red stripe always connects to the minus 12 volt and connects it like that. I like to install the cable first just so it means I haven't got the module dangling off the back. It's a bit easier to handle. So first of all make sure your red stripe aligns with the minus 12 volt rail which is in this case is marked as a bottom two pins and then on the module itself again it's the lowest two pins on the module And when I'm screwing it in place, I like to leave the screws a little bit loose at first, just so I can adjust it later. Just to make sure it fits in. Trigger the module from a gate signal, whatever you're using is going to have a gate output. So in this case, I'm using a, a key step sequencer or keyboard. But if you've got a step sequencer or a MIDI to CV converter, you need to have one end of the cable connected to your gate output, obviously, and gate input, your envelope. For the CV, I'm using a dirt for busboard system in this case. And what this allows you to do is use the, the bus system that will carry CV through to different VCOs and also if you're using an appropriate MIDI CV converter it will also carry gates to modules that will that are equipped to receive it and both console generators and the DHA DSR are. So if you've got one of those set up then you can literally communicate with this without even needing to use a cable. But in this case, all I've got is just a, you know, external sequencer going straight into the, the system. But my CVs are passing through the, the bus board. But with this system, if you are using the bus board, let's say I've got a MIDI to CV converter and it's compatible with the, the bus system and it's operating this through the bus board itself. As soon as I patch an external gate in, that will cancel the internal connection and it will just work as normal. Same with the CV as well. At the moment it's it's running these two oscillators but if I connect to one volt prod save to the, the voltage input then that will cancel it. There'll be a video covering this later on as well just so you can see how this system works with the, the bus board system. Just like the contour generators have these manual trigger buttons to trigger the envelope, the H80SR also has one up here.
The way the envelope generators work is when they receive a high gate signal, first it activates the attack stage of the envelope. It then passes on to the decay stage, then the sustain, and then release. I've got the envelope set up with a VCA at the moment, but the same principle would apply if you was using it to open a filter or control the level of something else. In this case, it's raising the level of the audio because it's, it's opening the VCA. So it's as you, as you introduce the envelope, it controls the level of, of sound that's passing through the VCA. At the moment, this shouldn't produce any sound because I've got all the controls on the, the envelope right the way down. But the first stage in the envelope is the attack. And if I raise the attack, what it's basically doing is it's controlling the level at which the sound is introduced to the VCA. So that's just the first stage of the envelope. The second stage is the decay. And it's ending abruptly at the moment because I've got zero decay. But if I turn the decay up halfway, that portion of the sound where the volume starts to decrease, that's the decay level. And that's with the, the key held down. Then passes on to the sustain, and the sustain controls the level, in this case, the level of, of volume, so long as a gate signal is present. So in other words, so long as I've got the key pressed down, the sustain will keep some level of audio passing through. If I turn it all the way up, it will keep the complete, uh, the full level of audio. But if I turn it down halfway, what will happen is it will pass through the attack first, so you'll get the slow attack. After it's finished with the attack stage, you'll get the decay stage of the envelope, and then the volume will drop down again, and it will drop down to the level that's dictated by the sustain level, which in this case is halfway. So you can hear the level drops, it gradually increases, then it drops, and it stays at that level. The last stage of the envelope is the release, and that controls the rate that the volume will then fall off after you release the key or after the gate signal ends. So at the moment, as soon as I take my finger off the key, it ends abruptly. But if I increase the release so halfway, it follows that same pattern, there's a volume swell and it dives down slightly, sustain is holding it about 50%, and then when I release the key, that's the final portion of the envelope. The DH-ADSR also has a slow switch, and in this mode, selected by the switch in the down position, changes the speed of the overall life cycle of the envelope, and it reduces it to about a fifth to about 20% of its normal speed. And that makes envelope times of over a minute possible. At the moment, I've got everything set at sort of halfway, so it shouldn't be that long. But that's the normal speed. But then when I increase that, So as you can hear, it's a lot longer, which is really good if you want to make really slow evolving sounds and you know, for drones, things like that. Another factor that comes into play with envelopes is gate length. On some sequences, you'll have a, a function that determines gate duty, or basically how long the gate signal is. And they'll generally allow you to control the, the gate length much as you would if you was holding the key down with the, the sustain up. So for example, I've got a little pattern running at the moment. Now that's with a 90% gate length, so the gate is continuing most of the way through each note. But if I change the gate down to the minimum of 10%, you can hear it's got significantly shorter. And It'll have a different effects on different um, elements of the different parts of the envelope. So if I take this release all the way down and then put the sustain up, 
then it should, as long as there's a gate signal, it should hold the note on. So at the moment, it's, it's the shortest gate length, 10%, if I put up to 90. And reduce that to 50%. Essentially, this is being used as a conventional envelope generator at the moment, and for it to function this way, you have to make sure that both the delay hold and the retrig switches are in the up position. That means they're, they're disengaged. There's two outputs. The standard output that would give you a normal envelope behavior is just the out socket, and then you've also got an inverted one, which does exactly what you'd expect. It just inverts the envelope. So rather than it, when applied to amplitude, if I put this into the VCA. Now, because the envelope is turned on its head, it means you're getting a signal constantly. And when you engage the envelope, you'll be actually taking the volume away instead of adding it. There's also a jumper on the back of the module that changes the bias of the inverted output. And that's explained in, in detail in the, the manual that's available on the website. There's also a re-trigger switch on the module so it can be used like an LFO. But because you're triggering an envelope generator, then you can essentially create much more complex modulation waveforms than you would with just a, a regular LFO. This is a module in single trigger mode. And to get the retrigger function working, put the retrigger switch down and the delay hold switch. And depending on your envelope settings, you might need to use the the hold, increase the amount of hold in order to keep the envelope going and keep it turning around. For instance, if you've got a slow attack, and turn the attack off, it stops. That's just basically keeping the envelope running so that it can, it can exist through the attack site stage and then go on to the next stages. So coming out of the retrigger mode and just focusing on the delay hold function. This mode responds to gate signals differently. You're essentially creating an envelope shape in a very linear fashion and each time it receives a gate, it will start that envelope and just see it all the way through until it finishes rather than restarting the envelope as it would do in the normal mode. Shaping the envelopes is very similar to the retrigger mode. The hold switch essentially controls the lifespan of the of the actual envelope shape itself, and the pre-delay controls the delay before the envelope starts after it's received a gate signal. So when you press a key, if you have the pre-delay quite a way up, so you get nothing for a predetermined amount of time. So if I wanted to make a really slow, without engaging the slow switch, just a relatively slow, gradual envelope with a, a gradual tail at the end of it, without any sustain, got a slow attack that's going to delay the envelope quite substantially, and then hold quite the way up just to keep the lifespan of the, to maintain the lifespan of the envelope. So if I try pressing multiple keys during the lifespan of that envelope, it won't actually interrupt the envelope. It will change the pitch because I've got the keyboard connected to the pitch. But it won't trigger another envelope until it's finished playing the previous one. So 
So essentially the gate is behaving like a trigger input as opposed to a gate, much like if you was playing a, a sampled sound from a, a sampler module, each time you, you trigger that sample, it will play the sample in its entirety. So let's say with a conventional envelope, when you're using the gate, the gate will control when the envelope starts and when the envelope finishes. So every portion of the envelope is answerable to the gate signal, basically it's slave to the gate signal. Whereas here, the hold pot replaces the gate signal in determining when the release cycle starts. So to illustrate the hold function, if the envelope was responding normally to a gate signal, then the gate will be determining when the release occurs, you know, whether there's sustain in the, the envelope or not. Whereas in this instance, the hold pot replaces the gate signal. So it's the hold pot that's determining when the release portion of the envelope kicks in. So if you imagine using this as an LFO, uh, really slow speeds, perhaps even with a slow switch, in circumstances like creating drone sounds, for example, where you, you want to have really slow, gradual, but slightly more particular or, or more a more flexible choice of, of ways in which you want to modulate something over a long period of time, then this will be absolutely ideal for that. In a conventional subtractive synth patch, you'd have an envelope controlling the VCA and another envelope controlling the filter. You can have just a single envelope controlling both at the same time, but how you can shape the sound, how you can modulate and automate the sound is, is very restricted by that. So essentially you'd need two of these to do the same job as the contour generators, which are two separate envelopes. But whilst these are very simple envelopes, this is an incredibly fully featured capable envelope generator even when just used as an envelope generator but then coupled with it being also usable as a, an LFO for all kinds of other modulation. So basically having two of the DHADSRs would replace the contour generators. It's exactly the same envelope internally so it can do exactly the same job. The difference is you've just got the additional separate controls for decay and release. So you've got more flexible envelopes. But also because it is still exactly the same internal circuitry, it shares the same behavior. So that characteristic Model D envelope behavior is present in both modules. So you can get exactly the same effect. Comparing the DHADSR to the, the console generators module, they're both based on exactly the same circuitry, the, the original Model D circuitry, and, that, and as such, they have exactly the same behavior. It was kind of a happy accident with the original envelope design in that after each cycle of the envelope, it wouldn't drop completely down to zero after subsequent key presses, or at least when, when keys were pressed in rapid succession. So you get this, this kind of stepped increase in volume and I've got that set up to illustrate this so I've got it I've got the, the envelope operating both a, a VCA and a, and a filter just to emphasize it so that's the console generators module doing exactly what the model D used to do that was part of its design and if I switch over to the DHEDSR got that set up to do exactly the same thing because the circuitry of these two is identical it's the same internal circuitry in the DHADSR as in console generators it's just that this is greatly expanded on Both the DHADSR and the console generators produce exponential CV curves and as such they play along well with the Minimod VCA which is linear. If you're unsure what's meant by exponential and linear, this diagram shows you a, an exponential envelope shape. And as you can see, 
the start of the envelope, the attack portion, has got some curvature to it, and so is the decay. And then you've got the sustain where it stays level, and then curvature in the, the release portion at the end. If this was a linear envelope, then all those lines would be straight. This kind of response seems more natural to us because it's a bit more similar to how human hearing works. You could use two of these to do the same job as one of these with distinct advantages. The contour generators is directly based on the envelope generator from the Model D, which means that whilst you've got two envelopes, there are only three stages and the decay pot also controls the amount of release when you've got the switches in this position. So however much you've got in decay, you'll have the same amount of, of release. The DH80SR is a four stage envelope, so you can set the amount of decay and release independently. But also, because you've got the slow switch, you can have envelope times that are about five times as long, and also you've got the delay hold function so you can have complex envelope shapes with delayed start and also the re trigger function so you can use it like a, a more complex LFO and with the inverted output you've basically got a, a much much more powerful more capable envelope generator than you would have with the console generator and of course using two of them together means you've got even more options You could use the DH ADSR along with other envelope generators like the, the console generators for example. But you can trigger them simultaneously and have them work in such a fashion where one envelope controls the first portion of the sound and then the second one controls the what comes after it. So for that purpose I've got two sitting next to each other and they're both rooted into this CV mix module which is a really handy little tool. They're both operating off the same gate signal, so I've got the gate going into the multiple and then operating both the, the envelopes simultaneously. But the settings on both envelopes are different, and the outputs are that are being mixed in the CV mix are opening the VCA and the filter simultaneously, just to emphasize how this works. So I'll demonstrate them individually. For a start, I've got all the controls down to nil in the mixer here, but if I increase just the level of the first envelope, which is just gonna control the attack portion of the sound. Then I'll take that out and show you what the other envelope sounds like on its own. So you've got that pre-delay and hold action going on. But then when you mix the two of them together, you get the effects of both starting with this one and then moving on to that one. And then of course you can do that in slow mode with well, either of these envelopes, but in the case of this setup, I'm going to switch the, the second envelope onto the slow speed. And also, I could put the second one into re-trigger mode so that it loops, but it won't start looping until it receives a gate signal. So it will also start at the same time as this first envelope, which will then give you like an introduction to the sound, and then it will start looping around in circles. So I just change the settings a little bit, just to make it a bit quicker to demonstrate. <laughs> So it started off with that first envelope. If I just reset it. If you imagine that playing over a really long envelope time, perhaps even on both modules, then you could make some really interesting evolving sounds. 
Straight out of the box it has this jumper installed on the back which can be removed so that the inverted envelope behaves how you want it to. With the jumper in place the module will add a plus 8 volt bias to the, the inverted output and with it removed it won't apply any bias, it will just be set at zero. To illustrate the difference in behaviour, the module on the, the right has had the jumper removed. So where the, the actual envelope will start from will be naught volts. If you imagine with a positive envelope, the signal will start from naught and then it'll increase up to a maximum of 10 volts and then come down. With the inverted envelope, in this configuration, it will start from zero, but it will still go down, which would mean that it's basically useless for certain tasks like controlling a, a VCA. Because a VCA, in order to open a VCA, it needs a positive voltage applied to it in order to allow the sound to pass through. You can alter that by applying a, a bias to it externally with another module, like I've got this connected to the, the CV mix. So at the moment, if I press key, nothing happens. But I can use the CV mix to apply a voltage, a base voltage to the, the signal that's, that's coming from the, the envelope. I press the key because it's the inverted um, envelope. It will actually deduct from the signal and take the volume down. If I put sustain right the way up, it will cancel it all together and hold it there. So if I show you how it affects the a filter. I'll keep the got the offset on the VCA right the way up so that audio is being permanently being constantly passed through. And then the inverted output which is currently going into the, the C V mix over here. So I'll take that off. Put that in straight into the filter. And so now So generally without an offset applied to the envelope, it won't work with a VCA because a VCA is expecting a positive voltage. So the only way to get that to work is to apply a positive voltage to it by using something like the CV mix. But it will work with a filter because you can have the filter completely open so that you've always got sound coming through and then use the, the frequency CV input to remove the to lower the frequency. So with this second envelope there's no bias applied to the signal so the envelope is it's doing nothing because the VCA is waiting for a positive signal and it's not getting any. So on this module I've got the jumper in place so you've got that plus 8 volt bias. So if I change the gate over to this and raise the CV level. Right so there, just with the, the CV going into the module, into the, the, the VCA, you've already got audio passing through, and that's that plus 8 volt bias being applied to the, the output of the envelope generator, so it's, it's keeping the VCA open basically, and then when you hit a key, it's doing pretty much what it was doing before, with the jumper removed, going through the, the CV mix, which was applying that the equivalent of that 8 volt, I think probably a bit higher than that, but it was, it was applying a, a bias to the the output of the envelope generator. So it's, it's, it's doing the same thing, but straight out of the module. So depending on how often you, you might want to use it in either way, you will determine whether you want to take the jumper off or leave it on. If you've got the DHADSR and you're not sure about how you want to set the the jumper for the inverted output, or if you want to change its behaviour at some point and you don't have to take the module out of the case each time you want to change the jumper over, then a really good option is the, the CV mix module, and for a whole bunch of other reasons. But essentially, the, the CV mix as well as being a CV mixer, so you can combine different CV signals together, like LFOs and envelopes and so on. As well as attenuating incoming signals, it can also reverse them. 
so you can feed it an envelope and basically invert it. And also it's got an offset function. So you can even change the base voltage or the base position that you're starting the envelope from or, or the modulation. So in this case, I've got the envelope just triggering as normal. And I can get exactly the same thing by running it through the, the CV mix. So at the moment, I've got nothing coming out of it because all the pots are at their nil position, zero position. So I'm in input two, and this the attenuator, as I turn it clockwise, it will start to release the CV coming from the the envelope generator and pass it through the output and this is triggering both the VCA and the, the filter at the moment. So now that's exactly the same as what I had just coming out of the out of the envelope generator on its own just to So obviously replicating exactly the same thing is pretty pointless, but if you wanted to flip it on its head, if I was to turn that completely in the opposite direction, completely anti-clockwise, anti now there will be no sound because I've, I'm basically working from zero volts and then going downwards. So there's, there's, no, there's nothing going to the VCA to open the, the VCA. And also the filter is at its lowest position. The frequency is all the way down. Now this pot up here, as long as nothing is plugged into the input, this will supply a constant voltage that's added to the mix. So whatever I've got passing through the mixer elsewhere, like in this case the envelope, it will add a voltage to it. And that will basically do the same job as the plus eight volt bias that you'd have on the inverted output down here. And it's that, that plus eight volt that allows it to work with a VCA, for example. So if I start adding And you can hear that's allowing some of the sounds to pass through the, the VCA in the filter. It's not quite enough to bring it all the way up to where it would be if if I just come straight out of the the inverted output. So I can add offset to it, give it some sort of point that sounds similar. And then when I engage the envelope with the keyboard. There you've got the inverted envelope. And I'll switch it back and just give you an example of that with a sequence running. So you can hear the transition.